everything is unknown. I face the power of sin on my own. I didn't know of a place I could go where I could find a way to heal my wounded soul. He said that I could come into his presence without fear, into the holy place where his mercy hovers near. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the mercy seat where Jesus is calling. He said his blood would cover me, his grace would flow free me, it will provide the healing. I'm running to the mercy seat. I'm running to the mercy seat. Are you living where hope has not been? Lost in the curse of a lifetime of sin? Lovely illusions, they never come true. Well, I know a place where there is mercy for you. He said that you could come into his presence without fear. Into the holy place where his mercy hovers near. Come running, come running. Covering his blood with flow breathing, it will provide the healing. Come run into the mercy seat. He said that I could come into his presence without fear, into the holy place where his mercy hovers near. the same stuff just different different aspects of it so I'll, I'll share it with you and it's funny I came in today with my suit on you know I still got them in the closet a couple people said you going back into banking no <laughs> but you know you put your suit on you're looking sharp you feel good people look at you a little different and that kind of goes in with what I'm going to be sharing with you today so but before I touch on that, you know, I'll be telling you a little bit, you know, I was a banker for 18 years, and I'm a small business owner now, and so I had a good time doing those things. But let me just, before I start, I thought about this on the way over here. I want to tell you the best job I've ever had. Now, listen, I was a business banker. I had a nice leather seat I sat in, nice big desk in an office. The best job I ever had was when I worked in the garage in the backyard with my dad. 
Now let me tell you why. I had two specific duties that if I wouldn't have learned, I wouldn't have went on and excelled in the careers that I did. One job, and Dad and Frank's going to appreciate this, was holding the flashlight. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Ain't nothing to this. But once in a while, I would hear this voice. Sally, I need to see where I'm looking, son, not where you're looking. <laughs> oh. Simple job just got complicated. You mean I got to stand here and hold that thing right there? Number two, standing at the kerosene tank washing the tools. Why do I got to wash the tools? He's working on cars. It's greasy. My dad, if he went to work and started his day out and you handed him a greasy tool that wasn't cleaned and ready to go, you were in trouble. Later on in life, I learned that one of his younger brothers, that was his duty, and he said the same thing. Yeah, you handed B.W. a dirty tool. You may as well go on home. <laughs> now, I struggled to washing tools but here's the wisdom, we're talking about wisdom that he had. That boy don't know, standing there washing him tools every day, that he's learning every tool in my shop. He learns where it goes, he learns what it's for, and one day when it's his time that I say, Charlie, I need you to take care of this job today for me, he knows exactly the tools he'll need. But while you're standing at the tank, Pastor Bob, it ain't that fun, is it? So I just wanted to share that with you. I'd love for the, if I ever went back into the corporate world and filled out a resume, I'd put that job down. Yeah. Mess them up, man, explain that one. <laughs> so let me, let me start out. Now, here I got my suit on. You know, I was a business banker. You know, I, I don't have a degree. I was told I couldn't be a banker. <laughs> Who are they talking to? So I got in, and within one year, I was promoted to a manager, and ever since then, I excelled in that career. Now, and I'm, and I'm sharing that this, none of this is boasting, none of this is, but you got to tell your story, or no one's going to really know what you're talking about. So this is about perception and reality, okay? So I'm walking through this career, you know, it's nice, like I said, I told you about my chair I had in my office, right? Yeah. Boy, it was nice, Pastor Bob. Sit right there. <laughs> Woo! Nice office. And, you know, that was fun. I'd walk up, you know, Pastor Bob, look, look, I'm coming down from the high office today. I'm going to watch your stuff today. And, and you just settle over there in the corner, and I'll take care of all the employees, okay? Appreciate yeah, I got it. You're doing a good job for me. Yeah, you know, sure. Floyd, listen, come by my office today, and I'll sign those documents for you and approve that. You're doing a good job, okay? Thank you. You can say something. <laughs> but see, I walked around in my authority. Sometimes if, if, the, if some of my CEOs and all, if they couldn't attend a function, a lot of them would call me. Why are you calling me? You got all these other executives. But they knew I could go, present myself well, represent the company well, and he trusted so I did all these things. It was great. It was fun. Look good in the suits, huh? All right now. And it's me. I, I like the suit. I feel good in the suit. Wear the suit well. Now, let's get over to reality. Through that career, great stuff. But there's also some other stuff that's the reality of it. The pressure. I'll never forget one of my employees went over in my place to a, he had to go to the top floor boardroom meeting, and he sat through one of the meetings I had to sit through sometime, and he came back and said, y'all think that's a pushy, nice, cushiony job? Go over there and sit with those guys one day and take what he has to take in those boardroom meetings. You'll come back with a different appreciation of what he's doing over there. So there's the pressures, and then there's the you know, excuse me one moment. Pressure getting to me. I got to get some water. 
So there's the, 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 here's the stress part. Got to produce numbers. You always got to be on top of your game. Today was great, but tomorrow they're looking to kick you out if you don't know what you're doing. Let me tell you something. I had a senior loan official that when you bring your loan right up, you know, we're dealing with money, dollars. He took his red pen out and corrected your grammar. A commercial business banker circling your papers and saying, bring that back when you correct those grammar mistakes. Hmm, a little bit of pressure there. So as I go through, you know, I enjoy my career, but the pressure mounts. What it was in my first five years wasn't the same as it was in my last. Because just as this whole world is, is getting changed and skewed, so does a lot of different businesses. They become corporatized, and we can only stay in this box, and here's the answer. And we just really want you to sit there and not really think about nothing. Just look good and smile. And something wasn't jiving. So what does Mr. Bold, Mr. Ferguson do in a meeting? This lady's giving a presentation. The customer's always right. Yes, sir. Whoever made that statement is a moron. <laughs> what? If the customer told me he deposited $300 in his account, but it was only $3, who's right? I am. So why would you tell me to say the customer's always right? That's a lie. As the whole room stayed silent, finally, the CEO who was in the back of the room, that's right, Charlie, you tell him. You right in that case. The customer's not right. We need our money. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's some of the stuff, you know. But everyone else, they don't agree that the customer's always right. But yet they're supposed to say it. They're supposed to lie to make themselves look good and upright. Like they're providing good customer service, which is based on a lie when you say that statement. So, so there's the struggles. How do I stay in this career that's been good to me having to stay in a lie? So remember, remember how I look, the suit, the nice chair. And then here's the reality over here. It's getting tough, man. They want me to treat people like a number, and I like to treat people like people. They want me to call this guy and tell him to bring me everything he's got when he's lost it all already. So there's the, there's the reality of it. So where do you go with that? That's the struggle. Here we go. We've got to find a balance in it all. You know, it's still me. I was the banker, but I'm also this guy over here getting tough. Getting tough to stay in this. That's part one. Willie, I'll be right back. Mr. Willie's going to read some scriptures in my absence. And the tension is mounting. <laughs> All right. Confessions of faith. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am complete in Christ. I have no sense of inferiority before God. I am a new creature in Christ. I am a new creation being. There is therefore no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, my Lord, is my wisdom he is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. He is my redemption. Amen? Amen. For the law of, oh, okay, excuse me. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That sounds almost like a rap song. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, has made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen? I am free from sin and a servant of righteousness. Amen? I am clothed. Everybody say, I am clothed. I am clothed. 
I am clothed with the garments of salvation and covered with the robe of righteousness. Amen. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Willie. All right, I'm back. All right, y'all saw the business suit banking guy. Now I'm just the all-American family man. You know, just got my sleeves rolled up, you know. Got the right, you know, attitude and the right look. Everything's going good. Got the house over there in the nice cul-de-sac. Got a beautiful wife, three nice-looking kids. We attend church regularly. We smile. We got it going on. Now, that's not a front. That's who we are, really. So we're not doing that to put anything on. That's who we are. Pastor Bob knows us. We've been here a long time. He can attest to that. He's seen our lives. So I'm going through. Here I am now. I've, I've had a good life. I got no complaints. Had a good banking career. Got a lot of nice friends, a lot of nice family, a lot of things going on. Got some of them outlaws, too. Got some of them outlaws. <laughs> so we going through. And here I am, I'm enjoying it, you know, going through the sports with the kids, going through different transitions, different things, and here's who people see. What's wrong with that? It's who I am. Going to the barbecues, you know, going to the little uh, auctions, silent auctions, you know, we're just going through life, nice family, nice American family. Enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? And that's good. You know, playing catch. Hey, did you see that hit the boy got? All that stuff. And that is part of life. And that's what most of the public sees. Reality. What the intimate people in your life sees. You know, we're having a good time, but I'll tell you. Sometimes the pressure on me. You know, I transitioned from a banking career into a business owner, and at the same time, I got to still perform and maintain life and be a part of everything. But sometimes I'm, I'm looking here. I should be looking over there, but I, I can't stay. I got to, oh, man, the struggle, the struggle. But see, everyone sees this guy. Cool, calm, collected. He ain't got no problems. That's the perception. And again, that's not putting on the front. That's really who I am. I am cool, calm, and collected. But there's those pressures, reality, that you got to deal with. That you got to walk through. And the public doesn't have to take that part of it. They just get the good part. Look at them, they're going to another family thing. Look at them over there, they nice. Then the part over here is, ah, man, I just can't get nothing done around here. Every time I take two steps forward, I take 16 back. You know, I'm so focused on trying to make a living as a small business owner. The government says they love you, but they hate you. And I'm trying to make it happen. They regulating me to where they don't want me to get out of bed in the morning. What am I going to do? So I got the spirit. Hey, y'all. That's what my neighbors see. Hey. But inside the house, here's what my wife hears. <laughs> Still loves me. So the pressure is on me, and it's getting on my wife, and it gets on my kids. And in there, sometimes there's a friend or a past, sometimes it comes in and some of it gets on in, but mostly the public's. That guy, he got it together, don't he? Look at him. Yeah. Yeah. Such a nice young man. But there's the perception. <laughs> and again, it's not untrue. It's not putting up a front. It's who we are. It's who I am. But if I invited you over, you know, excuse me one moment. 
pressure getting to me. I got to get some water. <laughs> so there's the, 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 here's the stress part. Got to produce numbers. You always got to be on top of your game. Today was great, but tomorrow they're looking to kick you out if you don't know what you're doing. Let me tell you something. I had a senior loan official that when you bring your loan right up, you know, we're dealing with money, dollars. He took his red pen out and corrected your grammar. A commercial business banker circling your papers and saying, bring that back when you correct those grammar mistakes. Hmm, a little bit of pressure there. So as I go through, you know, I enjoy my career, but the pressure mounts. What it was in my first five years wasn't the same as it was in my last. Because just as this whole world is, is getting changed and skewed, so does a lot of different businesses. They become corporatized, and we can only stay in this box, and here's the answer. And we just really want you to sit there and not really think about nothing. Just look good and smile. And something wasn't jiving. So what does Mr. Bold, Mr. Ferguson do in a meeting? This lady's giving a presentation. The customer's always right. Yes, sir. Whoever made that statement is a moron. <laughs> what? If the customer told me he deposited $300 in his account, but it was only $3, who's right? I am. So why would you tell me to say the customer's always right? That's a lie. As the whole room stayed silent, finally, the CEO, who was in the back of the room, that's right, Charlie, you tell him. You right in that case. The customer's not right. We need our money. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's some of the stuff, you know. But everyone else, they don't agree that the customer's always right. But yet they're supposed to say it. They're supposed to lie to make themselves look good and upright. Like they're providing good customer service, which is based on a lie when you say that statement. So, so there's the struggles. How do I stay in this career that's been good to me having to stay in a lie? So remember, remember how I look, the suit, the nice chair. And then here's the reality over here. It's getting tough, man. They want me to treat people like a number, and I like to treat people like people. They want me to call this guy and tell him to bring me everything he's got when he's lost it all already. So there's the, there's the reality of it. So where do you go with that? That's the struggle. Here we go. We've got to find a balance in it all. You know, it's still me. I was the banker, but I'm also this guy over here getting tough. Getting tough to stay in this. That's part one. Willie, I'll be right back. Mr. Willie's going to read some scriptures in my absence. And the tension is mounting. <laughs> All right. Confessions of faith. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am complete in Christ. I have no sense of inferiority before God. I am a new creature in Christ. I am a new creation being. There is therefore no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, my Lord, is my wisdom he is my righteousness. He is my sanctification. He is my redemption. Amen? Amen. For the law of, oh, okay, excuse me. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That sounds almost like a rap song. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, has made us free from the law of sin and death. Amen? I am free from sin and a servant of righteousness. Amen? I am clothed. Everybody say, I am clothed. I am clothed. 
I am clothed with the garments of salvation and covered with the robe of righteousness. Amen. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I can do all things through Christ Jesus, which strengthens me. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Willie. All right, I'm back. All right, y'all saw the business suit banking guy. Now I'm just the all-American family man. You know, just got my sleeves rolled up, you know. Got the right, you know, attitude and the right look. Everything's going good. Got the house over there in the nice cul-de-sac. Got a beautiful wife, three nice-looking kids. We attend church regularly. We smile. We got it going on. Now, that's not a front. That's who we are, really. So we're not doing that to put anything on. That's who we are. Yeah. Pastor Bob knows us. We've been here a long time. He can attest to that. He's seen our lives. So I'm going through. Here I am now. I've, I've had a good life. I got no complaints. Got a good banking career. Got a lot of nice friends, a lot of nice family, a lot of things going on. Got some of them outlaws, too. Got some of them outlaws. <laughs> so we're going through. And here I am, I'm enjoying it, you know, going through the sports with the kids, going through different transitions, different things, and here's who people see. What's wrong with that? It's who I am. Going to the barbecues, you know, going to the little uh, auctions, silent auctions, you know, we're just going through life, nice family, nice American family. Enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? And that's good. You know, playing catch. Hey, did you see that hit the boy got? All that stuff. And that is part of life. And that's what most of the public sees. <laughs> Reality. What the intimate people in your life sees. You know, we're having a good time, but I tell you. Sometimes the pressure on me. You know, I transitioned from a banking career into a business owner, and at the same time, I got to still perform and maintain life and be a part of everything. But sometimes I'm, I'm looking here. I should be looking over there, but I, I can't stay. I got to, oh, man, the struggle, the struggle. But see, everyone sees this guy. Cool, calm, collected. He ain't got no problems. That's the perception. And again, that's not putting on the front. That's really who I am. I am cool, calm, and collected. But there's those pressures, reality, that you got to deal with. That you got to walk through. And the public doesn't have to take that part of it. They just get the good part. Look at them, they're going to another family thing. Look at them over there, they nice. Then the part over here is, ah, man, I just can't get nothing done around here. Every time I take two steps forward, I take 16 back. You know, I'm so focused on trying to make a living as a small business owner. The government says they love you, but they hate you. And I'm trying to make it happen. They regulating me to where they don't want me to get out of bed in the morning. What am I going to do? So I got the spirit. Hey, y'all. That's what my neighbors see. Hey. But inside the house, here's what my wife hears. <laughs> <laughs> Still loves me. So the pressure is on me, and it's getting on my wife, and it gets on my kids. And in there, sometimes there's a friend or a past, sometimes it comes in and some of it gets on in, but mostly the public's. That guy, he got it together, don't he? Look at him. Yeah. Yeah. Such a nice young man. But there's the perception. <laughs> and again, it's not untrue. It's not putting up a front. It's who we are. It's who I am. But if I invited you over one day 
and said, just stay with me through the struggles a day at my house with me. I ain't putting up with that. I can't take that. Well, my wife's got to take it, though. Can you help today? No. The struggles hit. If you were to see the struggles, you'd go, is that the same Charles over there I see throwing the ball and looking like he's got it together? Yep, that's the same one. That's the same one. So there we are. The perception and then the reality. All intertwined in there, mixed in there. Willie, come on up. Y'all let him read some scriptures to you for a minute. Want me to wrap it this time? Okay, I got you. <laughs> and the tension is still mounting. <laughs> okay, here we go. The Lord is the strength of my life. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen? Amen. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. I have, or we have, the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen? God always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. We have overcome by the blood of Christ and the word of our testimony. I take the shield of faith and stop everything that the enemy brings against me. I submit to God. I resist the devil, and he flees from me. I draw near to God, and God draws near to me. Amen? No weapon formed against us shall what? Not prosper, because our righteousness is of the Lord. I am far from oppression, and fear does not come near me. God has not given us the spirit of but of power, love, and a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. Amen? Turning the page. <laughs> okay. I am a spirit of faith and do not doubt the word of God. The spirit of truth abides in me and guides me into all truths, last one, in all my ways I acknowledge him, and he shall what? Direct my path. Back Thank you, you, Willie. Whoops. That's how it goes. See that? Hey, what do you do? You just pick up something and wipe it up. There you go. Ain't no problem. There we go. All right, now here I am again. Hey, what happened to the guy with the suit the first y'all saw? What happened to that guy? <laughs> so here I am. I'm still me. But now I kind of dress like this these days. Here's my work shoes. They ain't approved by OSHA, by the way. <laughs> but you know what? That's right. Hey, it's my business. If I want to wear flip-flops, I'm going to wear me some flip-flops. So... Here I am, small business owner now, banking's gone over there, I'm still the family guy, you know, I still got the banking experience, the knowledge though. See, that didn't leave, that didn't leave. You know, I had one friend of ours, Rachel, we just visiting, and she looks at me square in the face, and she was serious. Are you having a midlife crisis? <laughs> You left a banking career to go fix a toilet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, when I was in banking, I was walking around about 245 pounds, not in shape anymore. Now I'm about 205 and feel great again. You know, I don't have to go sit in a meeting wanting to say the opposite of what they're saying. I didn't want to have to sit there and agree that I don't agree, you know. Now, it's my thing. It's the American dream. Look at me. See, it's still me. <laughs> so I'm enjoying it. I made a decision. 
I'm going to get out of this, which is grinding me down to nothing, and I'm going to do something else that's productive for me, and it'll help my family. Now, here again, the perception, here it is. That guy, and he got it made, gets to do what he wants to do. It's kind of weird. I get to do what I want to do? I'm going to try that out one day, see how that works. <laughs> <laughs> Doing his thing, living the American dream. I got to make this thing happen. I got to set up jobs every day. I got guys depending on me to earn a paycheck. I got to take care of this insurance stuff. I got to still look at my family at night. I'm getting caught up in this stuff. Man, this is tough. Yeah, yeah, I still own that business. We doing good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got my flip-flops on. I do what I want to do. <laughs> Rachel, that auditor who was here the other day, messed up my books, and they say I owe them $9,000. Who's going to answer that call when I call you? Mmm, the pressure. It's a mistake. Well, Mr. Ferguson said on you to prove we made a mistake. I'm not the auditor, you the auditor. Well, what you don't understand is this, does she know the perception she should have of me? Don't she know I got 18 years of experience in banking? I'll write your audit workbook for you. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we have got plenty of work going on. It's good, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what I'm going to do about this thing. I write my dispute letter. Listen, I'm not disputing anything. I'm just telling you, you made an error. Well, Mr. Ferguson, you got to prove that. Okay, all right. My agent calls. She proves an amount. The amount's wrong. I say it's this. The agent has to call back and say, well, Mr. Ferguson was actually right. Well, now we're going to sound stupid. <sighs> mm. Yeah, we got a full schedule next week. <laughs> Everything's going good, Pastor Bob. $9,000. Pressure. See? The perception is, man, that guy's doing what he wants to do. He's got, it got it together. The American dream. Look at him. Man, it's midnight. I'm still writing up invoices, trying to figure out this audit letter dispute that I didn't do. Why don't they pay me to do the audit next time? <laughs> My numbers were right anyway. Pressure. Internet isn't bad, but it's pressure. So, public sees the American dream. Look at that fella, a banker, all American guy, doing his own thing now, got his own business. You see his wife, a beautiful wife and kids, and that nice. Got a wonderful pastor and pastor's wife and a church and a father-in-law, mother-in-law, got it all. They make some good food in that family. Y'all got to go eat with them now. <laughs> Rachel, I can't make it tonight. I got to get this job done. Floyd, Floyd will attest to this. Sometimes your ox gets in the ditch. Yeah. And the ox doesn't care what day it is, what time it is, what you got going on, how many other pressures you got on you. The ox is just looking at you going, why don't you come and get me out the ditch? So you got to go get him out of the ditch. I appreciate it too. You're welcome. So here we go. Perception, reality. And again, perception is not fake. That's just part of your life that you lead that the public sees. And by the way, it's not always the public's invitation to come see everything personally. Everything ain't everyone's business, by the way. There's some intimate things that's no one business but your intimate family. 
Okay? So, nice, good, a little rough. I'm out here helping people with their properties. I'm not touching my own property. They looking at me, shaking my hand, job well done. My wife is looking at me like, why don't you do something? <laughs> but that's where we are. <laughs> you like that one, boy? <laughs> I don't really do anything. Yeah. <laughs> so there's the perception and the reality. And that's not saying I'm a great guy only on this side and a horrible guy. But there's, this is called life. And there's hills and valleys. There's hills and valleys. Hills and valleys. And just when you think you've paved your own road, an earthquake comes along, and then you got hills and valleys, hills and valleys, hills and valleys. So you just got to go through it. By the way, the scripture sheets in between each session is a hint of how you get through it. So, here's the pressures, but here's the good parts. $9,000? Let me get back over here. $9,000, Floyd. No, we're going to get back over here. We'll deal with that. It is good. I do appreciate it. I'm enjoying it. But an easy way out would be for me to go, you know what, I'm done with that. I'm just going to go work for company ABC and let them worry about all that stuff. Hmm. Charles, would you really be happy doing that again? Nope. So as long as I can maintain what I'm doing and it support my family, I'm going to keep on doing it. Even though the public don't see this part. They don't see the struggle. They don't see the, the, the tossing and turning. That, you know, it's easy to go over here and just punch in. Boop! I do my stuff. Boop! And I leave. But over here, I thought it was midnight. It's actually 2.30 in the morning. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Pressures. Perception and reality. Mr. Willie, come on up and read him some more, brother. <laughs> Y'all getting something out of this? Amen. Can you equate it into your own life? Yes. Come on, Willie. It's good, ain't it? Uh -huh. Wow. Don't come back here with the towel. <laughs> <laughs> no, no toga outfits, bro. No, no toga. Maybe you and Rachel at the house, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, here we go. I cast all my cares upon him, for he careth for me. In Christ Jesus, I am carefree. The love of Christ controls me. The love of God has been poured out within my heart through the Holy Spirit within me. There is no fear in love, but what? Perfect love casteth out fear. I let the peace of God rule in my heart. I love this. I have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. All, I have all power over the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt me. I have been redeemed from the hands of the enemy. Amen. God supplies all my needs according to his what? Riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. I forbid sickness, poverty, confusion, or defeat to come on me. The word is forever settled in heaven. Last one. Y'all, everybody should know this. All right. The word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light unto my path. All right, Brother Charlie, the tension is mounting. Yes. Hey, I'm not even going to stand on that side now. I mean, look at me. What is going on? I'm stuck in the reality now. What happened to that dude in the suit? It's still me. I got a lot of knowledge I can share with you. Don't look at me that way. Janine, you know me. Don't turn. It's me. Mike, I'm not on drugs, man. I'm all right. He looks like he's been wallowing in the pig pen. See, the ox got in the ditch on me, Floyd. And no one was calling the house to help. I didn't call out for no help. I just had to go out there and deal with that ox. And it was tough. A job that would have took me normally 45 minutes took me four hours. The whole time I'm wanting my daddy home. Daddy would be here. He'd fix this quick like. And then I thought, old daddy, Charlie, go wash them tools, boy. Charlie, let me see where I'm looking, not where you're looking. <laughs> daddy would stick with it. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to get this thing. But the ox was in the ditch, and he was heavy. So now, same thing with the, with the worky. I mean, it's just heavy. Well, Mr. Ferguson, you know, this job, you know, wasn't done. That, what, whoa, what, wait, wait. I got to deal with this stuff now. Well, see, that really wasn't my guys. That was something that happened. No, no. Okay. <laughs> Five thousand dollars floyd we got him down to five thousand from nine that's still wrong though <laughs> see we're working on it we're still working on it reading them scripture sheets i'm gonna work this thing down from nine to five <laughs> can't go to that side not dignified enough now y'all don't know this charles see y'all used to seeing the suit man this is casual at least Nice casual casual, but not pig pen looking casual. Your hair still looks good though. Hey. <laughs> but this is it. Now, the public gets a, a whiff. What is that? Look at that's Charles. What's happened to him? What the what? I know I have to call Rachel, Facebook or do something. I'll find out what's going on. So a little bit of the public sees you. How much more does your personal home life see you? See, I've been wallowing in this pig pen, and I ain't cleaned myself up yet. So that's what life does to us sometimes. We, we get out of track. We get off whack. We don't wake up meaning to do nothing wrong, but we do it. Put up Romans 7.15. I think that's right. Frank, I didn't have any notes today. We in for something. <laughs> for what am I doing? I do not understand. For I am not practicing what I'd like to do, but I'm doing the very thing I hate. That's where we get sometimes. Sometimes this is how we see ourselves. But we want a glimpse of that old suit again. What happened to that dude in the suit? But see, we get mired in that clay and in that mud, and, and you start seeing yourself differently, and you start feeling. You know, when you put on a suit, you kind of feel good automatically, don't you? Just walk around. How y'all doing? But when you got this, you kind of. They ain't looking at me, are they? You crawl up under that seat if you have to. But that's where we get. So in my life, my personal life, I've had a good life. I ain't got no complaints. You know, I've done some good things. I've done some great things. I've done some bad things. I've done some stupid things. But what I don't want to happen is to let my stupid things linger. I don't want you to get grease all over you because I ain't cleaned myself up yet. 
So this is a personal message. It's to my wife even more. And now this is getting a little personal, but I share it because you're my family. I don't treat my wife the way I should sometimes. Sometimes I'm rough. Looking at you, it's still me, the all-American guy up here. But see, sometimes I get into my own world. And you forget to be the husband and the father and just the nice guy you're supposed to be. Not because you mean to, but when you get muddy, you look bad. You feel bad. You get all cut up, it hurts. And if you ever got really, really greasy, it don't come off with one little quick washing, y'all. I mean, boy, my dad has some stuff in the garage. You, woo! You had to bathe in that stuff for days. Get clean sometimes. But to my wife personally, I've been affecting her and my kids, not because I'm a mean guy. Let me tell you something. The, the things I do wrong on most people's scale, they ain't even on the scale. But that don't give me a loophole. That doesn't make, see, when you, just like Pastor Bob will tell you, the, the closer you grow to God, the more accountable you are to him. You know, the things that may uh, not be sin to someone else may start becoming sin to you. They ain't necessarily wrong, but to you, they're all wrong. So I've been a brute lately. Now, y'all looking at me, you know, Charles, he talking about himself? Yep. I'm tough sometimes. I'm mean sometimes. I'm lazy. Now, I'm not a lazy man, but I get lazy. Personally lazy. You glad Michelle ain't out here. <laughs> so what do I do? What do you do? You know, it's like you're in that rut. You don't want to be in the rut, but you don't know how to quite get out of the rut. And you, and you want to go forward, but you just, well, if I go, I still got this old nasty stuff on me. So what do you do? Come on up here, Rachel. I'm going to show you what you do. Yes, sir. Try stopping me. <laughs> now, there's some stuff I do against Rachel that, again, wouldn't be on anyone else's radar. That's nothing. At least your man's home. My man won't come home. You know? I don't hit my wife. I don't call my wife names that everyone thinks it's okay to call. I've never called my wife a name like that, ever. These other guys think, why haven't you? Yeah, those things. So, you know, why are you so hard on yourself? Again, the more accountable I am, because see, I serve a God I'm going closer to, and a wife that's a godly woman, and the straighter she is, I can't stay crooked. So I got to straighten up. And I don't want her to be standing. Right. I mean, why would I want to do that to her? Why do I want to put grease on my wife? She didn't do nothing wrong. But see, some people want to muddy the other person up to make themselves feel a little better about it. But no blood, no uh, mud belongs on her. So I'm sorry, Rachel. I love you. Now, I'm not going to pull out the diary and tell you all the problems, but that's an example of what you do. What you do. I, 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 I think I've made her muddy some, and I shouldn't have. You know, she, she gets to deal with my muddy, nasty, grimy self, and if I don't do something about it, I'm going to look at her one day, and I'm going to see her muddy. I don't want to see her muddy. I want to see her pretty. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. So it's still me. I'm not going to get over there, but I'm, I'm wanting to get over there, Pastor Bob. But see, even though I'm right here right now, I know who I am. You might think I'm the worm in the cabbage patch. 
Because what happened to that dignified looking young man who used to walk around with his suits on? He's muddy, grungy looking. He smells too. <laughs> but it's still me. See, my ox was in the ditch. You don't understand. I had to get my ox out of the ditch. I mean, I, I did a good thing, and you're making it like a, it's my lifestyle. Not my lifestyle. Come on up, my brother. Y'all think it got that bad. Woo! We still got that following this one. <laughs> Woo, that's a tough one to follow. Come on. Wow. You know, that, only God can do something like that. You know, do that kind of work in a man's heart where a man gets up and confesses before his wife and his family that he's failed. You know how hard it is for a dude to do that? For a guy to do that in general? You know, so I tip my hat off and only the Holy Spirit can really, truly do that kind of work. And you know what? To me, that is revival. That's real revival, amen? You see, we've been praying for revival for quite some time, even before I even got in here, I mean, revival, and we're seeing now the breakthrough of revival in a man's heart. And in the name of Jesus, may that spread to all of us, and may we experience revival, just like this brother's experienced revival, and be honest and upfront and say, hey, honey, I failed. It takes a real man to do that. And uh, for some of us, we wish we would have learned that lesson a little sooner. Believe you and me, some of us wish we would have learned that sooner. So take it from this, from what we're seeing before us right now and just say, Lord, touch and change and give me a heart of flesh, as uh, Jeremiah talks about, and not that heart of stone. Amen. That's real revival. I commend my, my brother for that. Amen. Let's continue. The word is true from the beginning, amen? And here's, here's what I would say my brother is saying today. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? Here's another one. I reckon myself to be dead indeed to sin, but I am alive unto God through Jesus Christ my Lord. And by the mercies of God, I present my body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. I am a member of the body of Christ, and Satan has no power over me, for I overcome all evil with what? Good. Amen. I am strong, and the word of God abides in me, and I have overcome the evil one. My weapons are mighty through God to the pulling down of Satan's strongholds. Amen. I cast down all imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God. I take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Amen. I'm not trying to step in on this man's uh, sermon, but I just really feel this in my heart. There's just something about pressure and when we as people allow God to mold us in those seasons of pressure. And it's, like a, it's like God taking a, a hammer and just hammering the steel to make sure that he gets it into the form in which he wants. And sometimes life and sometimes pressure would hammer us and hammer us and hammer us. But if we know that it's 
God, thank you, Holy Ghost, it's God doing the hammering through this pressure and I'm submitting myself to being hammered, then God can take me and mold me and shape me and conform me, hallelujah, into the image in which he's trying to produce, amen? And that's what I see him doing. Charles is talking about the reality. He's talking about the pressures. And I think that's, I believe in my heart, that's what the Holy Spirit is doing in my brother. Through these pressures, and for all of us, because we all go through pressures, amen? We all have stress. We all have trials. We all have tribulations. We all have things that are, like we sing about the song, we all have weight on our backs, amen? I'm sorry, Brother Charles, but it just hit me like that, amen? And we all have this weight that's on our back, and, and what the song says, we come and lay those burdens down, amen? And Jesus says that my yokes are easy and my burdens are light, amen? But sometimes during that hammering process, we're like, man, Lord, I don't know if I can take any more hits. And the Lord say, I'm going to hit you one more time. Well, Lord, I don't want another hit, but I'm going to hit you one more time. And at the end, what they do with those swords, after they're through banging it and, and hammering it, they take the sword and they put it in that cool water to cool that thing off, amen? Amen? So after it's all said and done, he's going to take you and look at that shiny marriage. Woo! Look at that shiny new suit, amen? Woo! Okay, now. Go, go ahead, James Brown. <laughs> what happened to that muck? Someone got invited to the black tie affair. Just when you think you all stuck over here. You got to pick yourself up. You know what? I think I got a tux in the closet. And you get on over here. And you get it on. And you put it on. And you look over at the muck. You didn't beat me this time. This is how I want my wife to see me. I know yesterday I looked like a pig wallowing around all day long. But now, we are ready to hit the town. What you gonna be? You gonna stay in the muck? Are you going to turn that thing around and go, look, I'm a creation of God. I'm always going to a black tower fair. I'm always the righteousness of Christ. I'm always more than a conqueror. My stride is even changing. I'm walking up to people now, looking them right in the eyeball. How you doing there, buddy? How you doing there? How you doing? How you doing there, nice lady? Same guy, just going through the hills and the valleys, listening to them scripture sheets. I heard you, brother, because if I didn't hear them scripture sheets, I'd have snuck out that door, ran down that street, went over there and jumped in that pond and tried to make myself a little clean and come out dirtier than I was when I jumped in. But I heard the scripture sheets. I wasn't listening to the people who saw me the other day. What happened to him? I wasn't listening to the devil going, yeah, you've been tough on your wife. You're going to face something. You, you ain't nothing. Let's rewind. Ms. Ferguson, you don't have a degree. You'll never make it in banking. Oh. Listen, it's tough to own a small business now. You'll never be able to do it. Huh. Listen. That tuck's probably got mothballs on it now. Looks pretty good to me. 
Well, your luster isn't there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Satan's a rough dude. And sometimes he likes to let you believe he's won. Because if he lets you believe you won, which means you've accepted his lie, then he don't care what tux, what you got on, you always feel like the mud. And if I got mud on my face, you really don't see me. But if you cleanse yourself, you'll see me. You can see me. I can, I can be in relation with you. I can, you want to be around me. And then, as Jesus is working through you and people want to be around you, then when you get in the mud next time, they're going to jump in there with him and help him out. That's our brother over there. We don't let him sit in the mud by himself. We go over there and jump in there and get him out of that mud. Remember that ox don't care how nice the suit looks. He just wants you to get him out the mud. Get me out this ditch. True story. One of my old neighbors in the old neighborhood had some plumbing issues. And when I say plumbing, it wasn't a leaky sink, okay? The real plumbing issues, Pastor Bob. The kind that everyone acts like they're doing something else because they can't come help you. Because it's a little rough. So I get out. I got my suit on back in them days. Hey, yeah, what's going on here, Tony? Oh, yeah, okay. All right. Well, let me help you. Well, what you going to do? Well, I'm going to help you. Well, you got your suit on. Yeah, but your leak is happening right now. You ain't got time for me to wait to go put on my other clothes. I, you need me now. That suit will be washed, and if it don't wash, we can throw it away and get another suit. When your ox is in the ditch, you just got to get him out. You might look muddy. You won't want anyone to see you. You will cower away if you think they look in your way. But don't do that. Because, see, they got mud, too. Because, see, look at me, no mud. <laughs> well, can I come visit you today? Where, am I home? No, too much mud over there. <laughs> I'll just meet you over here. See, we all got mud. We all got stuff. We got stuff we can share. If there's stuff so bad you need to talk to your pastor or a good Christian trustworthy counselor, those are the ones you let the intimate stuff be known to. But it, it ain't nobody's business about your intimate personal relationship. I didn't share with you what mistakes I make. I just said I made mistakes. Okay? That's between me and my wife and my kids to share the intimate personal mistakes but I can let you know Phil I'm making mistakes brother like, can you help me pray for me something I, I can't share them with you but I just need you I got muddy man and I need someone to spray me down because I know when you spray me down woo! well hey <laughs> a little honky tonk time in a good way Overall, I think I'm a pretty decent guy, but I have my moments, and I'm sorry if anyone here had to take my uh moments, and I'm ready for some of yours, and I've taken some of yours, but I don't lay on them and go, you know what, that person's just a right. No, you get forgiven by me before you even know what happened. Sometimes we've got to deal with some issues. But most of them, you can just, if you've got a chalkboard at home and you're not using it to teach your kids school, but you're using it to keep count of your offenses, tell me where your address is and I'll come over and I'll take care of that chalkboard for you. <laughs> we'll bust that thing in a million pieces because it's causing you some problems. You in the mud with that chalkboard. So remember. Everyone can go to the Black Tie Fair. Everyone's invited. You might be muddy for the moment, but you get cleaned up. And you go, hmm, 
I'm all right. I know every day I can't design. I just got to walk through it. And that hill feels good, and I'll get through that valley, and I'll get back on the hill again. Yeah. Willie, one more quick shot. This won't be long. There's one more part to it. All right, okay, okay. Woo, <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> Boy, was he clean or was he clean? Woo! All right now, Miss Rachel. I don't think they're going to be around for lunch today, y'all. <laughs> Baby, we're going through the house. <laughs> oh, 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 hang on, hang on. I mean, Charles, that is, you know what I'm saying. No. <laughs> okay, here we go. I do not let the word depart from my sight. I keep it in the midst of my heart, for it is life to me and health medicine to all my flesh. I am a branch, and I abide in the vine, Jesus Christ, and bear much fruit. I'm a doer of the word and am blessed in all my deeds. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. I keep my eyes single on Jesus, and my whole body is full of light. I give, and it is given unto me, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and all right, all right, here we go. God makes all grace abound to me, and I have all sufficiency in everything, and I have an abundance for every need, including the preacher. Yes, sir. One more part. See, the tux is good for you and me. That's for us. But there's one more step. You know, I like the way I look in the mirror with my tux. Nice. But I got to get one step deeper and start seeing me as Jesus sees me. I don't care how nice that tux is, how many diamonds in your cup links. It ain't nothing to him. But when he sees you like this, white, pure as snow, because I've cleansed him. He's asked me into his heart. And now look at him. Woo! I can't even look at him. He blinded me. That's how he sees you. That's how he sees you. Don't get stuck on the tux. Get cleansed by him. So he sees you pure. And he knows you. Son, I know you're going to make mistakes. And I still love you. I know you're going to do good things, and I still love you. I'm going to love you on the mountaintop, and I'm going to love you way down in the mud. Because your faith has bonded us. It sees you clean and pure. I ain't knocking the tux, but I'll take this over that any time. Perception, reality. When you put that in there, that I am the righteousness of Christ. I am more than a conqueror. Woo! Someone told me I'm.